Hi guys, uh, this is Leo the King 4 or Minecraft of Storm 101 uh, and I'm here with another video uh, which is a tour of my map Kingdom of Avon a medieval Skyrim and Lord of the Rings inspired medieval adventure for MCPE. Uh, I have done a tour of the world before but since that video I've made a lot of changes and added a lot of new structures uh, and I've al I also think I've improved my video making skills a tiny bit, not much but maybe a tad. Um, so here we go. Oh dear. That was a creeper. Good thing I have mob griefing, mob, mob, mob griefing off. Uh, come on, game mode C. So yes, after spawning in the hub and teleporting to your house, you will, uh, of course, read the quest books in the chest, which will guide you to finding each of the lost relics which you need to summon and kill the dragon. In this video, I'm not going to be playing through my map, I'm just going to be flying around in creative and talking through some of the features, maybe showing you some hidden things you may not know, uh, may not have known were there. I don't know, just basically having some fun and talking a bit about the history and that sort of thing. So, this is the town of Riverwood, uh, which, which of course is based off of Riverwood from Skyrim. And it's... In terms of um, how the buildings are situated, it's not the same. But the sort of style of building is based off of that from Skyrim. There's some good loot in these houses. It's sort of the first location you really come to before you head off on your quest. Um, so there's some cool stuff in the chests. But you can find that out for yourself. Um, yeah, I'll talk a bit about this village. Um, I actually made this as the first thing I added to this map. So if you didn't know, the original map, which my adventure is built off, uh, is built on, is um, called The Last Kingdom, Swampton, Scrimble and Stonehaven, which was originally made by Shrimp1970 or Shrimp, uh, Shrimp MCPE, link in the description to his YouTube channel and Twitter. He made an amazing map with three massive medieval cities, and I just couldn't help myself but download it and start building some smaller structures on there. And then it sort of got out of hand, and now I have the map I have, which seems to be way more popular than I anticipated. Um, so yeah, this was the first thing I built. Um, I cleared a large area of the forest, which is now known as the Lyrewood, this massive pine forest which stretches far across the lands. And so I built Riverwood, based off of a tutorial done by the YouTuber by the name of Hornet, H-A-U-N-E-T who did a, a tutorial series where he showed you how to build the traders, how to build a general house, how to build the outer wall, which I adapted a bit, as you can see I curved it around here and gave it a little watchtower. And he also showed you how to do the blacksmith. Uh, they're very good videos if you want to be able to build this exactly. Um, link in the description, as I said. So, that was Riverwood. We now come along this path which leads to most of the locations for the quests for part one of the map. Uh, signs lead you to where you need to go, so if you do get stuck, just look at these. The quest books will be telling you uh, where you're going. For example, the first quest is to head to Greenhill Lane to find Bilba Bilbury and retrieve the relic which she has. If you didn't know, if you just come across this video and you know absolutely nothing about my map, well, the idea is uh, it's an open world role play game adventure, and you're in this kingdom. You're in the kingdom of Avon, and you need to find loads of different lo loads of relics, which are basically nether stars, but they're scattered across the lands, deep in crypts and high in mountains. And you need to find find them so that you can summon the great dragon and slay him before he awakes by himself and destroys the kingdom. Um, that's the storyline for part one of the map, but I recently added an entire part two with a brand new location, brand new quests, and all sorts of new stuff, which I will also be showing you in this video. So yeah, here we have the traders, um, so you can trade some cool stuff with that villager or just steal, steal his belongings from the chest. We have the library archives. I've tried to add loads of sort of um, secret uh, references and hints um, all around the map. So, for example, if you go in this chest, it has a book entitled Species of Avon, which took me a while to write. And so it also it outlines a bit of history for this world, so as you can see it gives you information on uh, the race of men, the sorcerers, the hobbits, the undead, uh, mythological creatures, that sort of thing. 
to give you a bit of background for this world. Um, quite a few things like that dotted around. So let's continue. We now come to Laketon Market, which is where you can find a lot of your supplies, your quest. So you have the butcher here. And one cool thing, which admittedly took me a long time to cycle through the villages, is that the um, villages inside each of the market stalls is relevant to the purpose of that stall. So in the butchers, we have the butcher. And in his chest, indeed, there is some raw meat which you can cook in any of the furnaces around the map because they're all stocked full with uh, with coal. Yeah, they're all stocked full with coal. So that's how, that's how you get most of your loot when you're starting off. On the first quest, and most quests you'll continue down here, there's a path leading off which goes to River Run, which I will show you later on after I've shown you this area. But that currently hasn't got a quest, so you don't actually need to go there uh, to achieve anything in the map. But if you want to, you can check it out. It's a very cool medieval village, which I will show you soon, as I said. But at the moment, this way, uh, to my right, over the bridge, we can go to Bree and Greenhill, West Old Fortress, Dragon Reach and Arendelle Church. And back there are the two major cities of Scrimville and the small town of Riverwood. So when we go over this bridge, we come into Bree Village. These houses, uh, again, were not designed by me. They were designed by a YouTuber, Lord Dan, uh, in his Let's Build a Medieval Village series. I adapted them a tiny bit. So I've just taken his basic way of building, which is sort of these three, three by three blocks of house segment. And they just kind of goes with that. Um, not all the houses here have interiors, but most do. That's currently some, something I'm working on, is detailing the map quite a bit more. But as you can see here, uh, there's a little bit of loot in, in some of the houses. So there's some emeralds which you can use in the market to trade some good stuff. But um, Quest 1 actually takes you up here to Greenhill Lane. And it tells you to find the house of Bilba Bilbury, which indeed is here. Now, Bilba's house is based off of Bilbo's house from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, if you hadn't guessed, because it's on the top of the hill. And you've got a nice little path leading down to the bottom, and that's the seat where he and Gandalf smoked pipe weed in The Hobbit. So up here we go. And into Bilba's house. I'm just going to show you where the relic is so that if you do get stuck you can just reference this. It's down here in her treasure room and that's because the storyline states that Bilba Bilbury came back from an adventure which he went on many years ago uh, and brought back a whole load of treasure much like Bilbo Baggins from The Hobbit. And that kind of explains why she's got all these diamonds and gold and stuff. And that is, in fact, what's inside these chests. But in here we have the relic, which is the nether star there. Oh, and a little reference, Sting, which you might recall is Bilbo's blade in The Hobbit, which he then passes on to Frodo in Lord of the Rings. Okay, up these steps. It's turning to night time, so I'll just fix that. There we go. Down here. All of the hobbit holes on Green Hill Lane have very detailed interiors. Uh, so there's lots of cool stuff in there you can check out. Um, cool loot and things and references. But over here we have the currently the only uh, outdoor hobbit hole. I'm going to be making more going back throughout this forest. But currently this is the only one. And this is where Samwise Reedbuck lives. It, it, it was quite fun creating all the Hobbit names, which you see on the signs posted outside all the houses. Because I've got like Samwise Reedbuck, um, Pippin Underhill. There he is, Samwise Reedbuck, how you doing? Very cosy home he's got. And all, oh, I 
think I might mention this now, but uh, the texture pack used with this map is not purely John Smith. The um, It's included with the download of the map, but actually I've edited many of the textures to fit my purpose. So for example, glass is one of those blocks which I retextured, and that's because in John Smith, all of the glass panes were the same. They were the same pattern, just with a different colour. So I uh, stole this from the uh, Conquest texture pack files, and I just think it looks way, way cooler. And I've done that with a lot of other blocks, including gold blocks, diamond blocks, um, doors, as you can see here. This isn't from John Smith, this is from Conquest. And I also retextured, um, most importantly, concrete. Because in John Smith, it was just these blocks of pure, single block colours, and that was not useful to me in making a medieval map. So I retextured them to some cooler things which may be more useful as a varied list of building textures. These things, which you'll find around the map, usually near locations of quests, are called guardian stones. And they're based off of the ones from Skyrim, which give you specific effects and abilities. However, you can only equip one at any one time, and that's the same in this map. So you click this, it gives you speed boost. And then, if you head over here, to another one, um, I'll go back over this in a moment, I'm just trying to show you something over here. If you go over here to this Guardian Stone, the Stone of Jumping, and you press it, it removes your speed boost and then gives you jumping. So much like in Skyrim, you can only equip one at any one time, so you can't become too OP. Unless you find the Elder Stones, which basically give you about 10 abilities in one, representative of a specific skill set, so for example a mage or a warrior, uh, so that's pretty cool. Here we have the barracks, which is based off of a design that Jerocraft did in one of his tutorials. Again, I've adapted it slightly, but not too much. This is one of the retextured concrete blocks I was talking about, by the way. We have the training grounds, so you can shoot at these uh, mannequins. Um, but yeah, there's some cool loot in there, very cool loot. You can also get a good view from the watchtower of the surrounding lands. Okay, so what's next? I think we are. Uh, I think I might show you the locations in order of uh, how you'll visit them when you're completing the quests. So, for example, next up is Arendelle Church, which you have to go past to get to Deephold Ruins, which is a massive crypt which took me a long time to make mostly uh, comprising of digging digging out the huge hole in which it sits. So you come to Arundel Church, you can explore if you like, on the inside. Um, again, this was designed by Jerocraft, link in description. But yeah, you have to go past this and round here and climb up these steps. There's another guardian stone there, by the way, stone of absorption. Yeah, as I said, up those steps to come here to Deephold Ruins, um, which on the outside is a ruined stone cathedral. Uh, but actually, uh, around the back in the graveyard, you enter the deep dark crypt, which is crawling with monsters. Sorry about that, that's the grandfather clock downstairs. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. But um, yeah, this is Deephold Ruins. If you come over here, you can look down into the uh, into the entrance of the crypt, the staircase. So let's leave via this exit and head into the crypt. It is a very, very large crypt, so I don't know if I'll show you all of it. I might do a full video on that in the future. But you come down here into the crypt. And it's a massive labyrinth of stone corridors expanding in all directions. So what you actually have to do is head down here. The quest book tells you to follow the skulls, which lead down here, and down there to the locked door. But first you need to come down here, enter this room, and collect the door key, which is a pressure plate, which uh, has permissions and can be placed upon cobblestone. So you'll then Head down here, still following the skulls, to here. 
Um, I'm going to use a lever so that I can remove it when I'm on the inside because I don't want to have to come back and reset everything. So here we go, we're inside the crypt. This is the main hall. Um, very cool, took me a bloody long time to make. But it's, you know, growing with vines and stuff and it's very detailed on the walls. Now again, I made this back before I had any plans of turning the map into an adventure. So I, I was just kind of building for the fun of it, building for the aesthetic, because I love medieval aesthetic, especially in Minecraft. Because you can just do so so much with it, you know? And I think Minecraft actually works best when you're doing medieval or rustic. I suppose with modern as well, but that usually relies... Um, what am I saying? This relies upon it too. It usually relies upon a texture pack. But then again, I'm using a texture pack now. So forget that. Yeah, this would look horrible in in vanilla textures. So it's kind of a cheat, I suppose, but not really. I just love John Smith. I've I've I couldn't believe it when MCPE finally released the update, where you could now officially use texture packs, and MCPE DL has been fantastic for that purpose for downloading texture packs and maps and mods and everything. It's it, it's amazing. Go go to MCPDL. If you're not watching this on there, that is, because I think I'm going to put this on the page for my map. But yeah, if, if you don't know what MCPDL is and you play Minecraft Pocket Edition, go and check it out because there is so much content on there from cre loads of creators, including myself, this map. Um, one second. Yeah, so this is a bonus quest map. So on one of the quests, you'll find a book which tells you to come back here to Deephold Ruins. Um, and behind the staircase, you'll find this chest with this map. And what this does is it leads you to Junefall, which is a de desert region of Avon, far to the east, with a massive desert pyramid built by Shrimp 1970. And then I sort of uh, redid the interior and expanded around it with some temples and stuff. So... Just so you know, that's where you can find the map if you couldn't find it and you were playing through the map. Ah, so now we're in the depths of the crypt. Um, you wind your way around here. If you go down here and you open this chest, what's that gold? Just be careful because it's a bit full trap. I'm currently flying, but if I wasn't, I would be falling through there, hitting the ground pretty hard and then being gorged upon by zombies. So you don't really want to do that. Stay clear of that trap. Um, in here, there's just a small room. Oh, there's another cool reference in here. There's Herobrine's Last Words. It's his very creepy diary, which I wrote on a bad day. So it's kind of disgusting. It describes him eating parts of his parts of himself and then explaining to you how he's going to pop up behind you and kill you. So he's a very pleasant guy, Herobrine. Skulls in here. Now the next door key, which you need to find, is in this chest. Uh, there, it's a pressure plate. And the door to use it upon is here. So it says find the door key to pass. So you'll place the door key down, come into here, which is the Halls of the Undead, or at least the next section is. Here, Halls of the Undead. Hint, hide in the walls and sneak. And that's to avoid these um, husks. Which I especially like because they look like they're zombies which haven't seen the light of day in a long time. So they're all uh, pale and rotten and dried out. So uh, now the corridor extends for a very long time with um, other corridors branching off. But here's a hint, just head straight. Don't go left, don't go right. But in fact, go to the bottom floor. There are two layers to this. Go to the bottom floor and keep going straight. And at the very end, you'll find the door key. And then the door is directly above where you found the door key. So it's fairly simple. Um, door key is down here. Come on. Come on. Okay, here we go. You'll go through here. Uh, I need to open the door. Go through here. And there is the door key. So... Once you've found the door key, you then go back to this area, climb up the, this spiral staircase in the middle, and head down here. 
and then use the door key here. This will summon a wither, uh, and it is a boss fight, the first boss fight of the map. So you'll have to fight the wither, fight off these skeletons, which eventually start attacking each other because they're idiots. And then here you will find the Relic of Deephold and the next door key. So in fact, you don't even have to kill the wither if you don't want. You can just run through, grab that stuff, and then keep going. There we go, destroy that, and we're through. Here's just a reminder sign, just in case you forgot to get the relic. And then we got the spiral staircase, and then a sneaky bit of command block, redstones type stuff will um, give the impression that you've returned to the start of the crypt, when in fact it's just teleported you there with some lighting glitches, of course, because it wouldn't be Minecraft if there, were, if there weren't lighting glitches. Come on. Okay, that fixed it. Here we go. Open this very nice door. Also, um, this crypt was very, very loosely inspired by a video posted on the, the YouTuber Sam the Gladiator's channel, back when he did Minecraft videos, featuring him, Grian, and Tortoise, um, doing a sort of role-play adventure type video where they're uh, in this kingdom, the kingdom of Valor, and going on a bunch of quests, and that crypt is one of them. So I sort of based it off of that. You'll, uh, If you go and watch it, link in the description, which I recommend you do because it's very, very funny and very entertaining, you'll definitely recognise uh, some of the crypt from there. Slash time set day. Sorry, I'm just I'm gonna hurry this along a bit because I realise the file size is already four gigabytes as of me this far in recording, so I'm just gonna hurry through. But the next quest will take you to Westhold Fortress up here, designed by Gyrocraft. Beautiful castle, honestly. So you'll come in here, and you need to find the nether portal, which is located down in the dungeons, which is down here. I'm not going to go into the nether because I can't be bothered right now. And as I said, I'm going to hurry this along. But the idea is you come down here, go down these steep, steep steps. Keep going. Until you come to the map wall. So here you get a good overview of the world of Avon, which I need to update actually over here because there's now a massive tower, a uh, replica of Isengard from Lord of the Rings down there, but I'll do that later. So you come to the map wall and it tells you to walk through and voila, there is the massive portal. But of course, I will leave that up to you. Go download the map, the link is in the description and enjoy playing through it. You know, it took a long time. Um, definitely a whole load of credit to Shrimp1970 for being a massive inspiration to me. Massive inspiration. This would not be possible without him. So, yeah, if you want to uh, look inside West Old Fortress in more detail, go do that. Go download the map again. Because there are some cool secret things in there, including a bonus quest book, which tells you to dig up Boromir's grave. Hmm, very spooky. Okay, one of the quests tells you to come down here. It says, head towards Weathertop Tombs. And a helpful hint, it says, quest six crypt and take the boat. So you'll take the boat down the river following the torches. You'll get off here. To Weathertop Tombs. And off we go. So it's sort of a walled forest surrounding the tombs. And the idea is that every tree represents one of the fallen soldiers, because this grave marks the resting place of all the soldiers who died in the Battle of Weathertop Hill, including the great Lord Amnuk himself. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty interesting, I suppose. I'm just going to give myself night vision, because uh, there is a stone of night vision over here. Because the crypt doesn't have much lighting, quite intentionally, because if you think about it, when, if you have a deep, dark, unexplored crypt, 
which has been resting in a location for years, untouched by any human. Then it's not really going to be lit up, is it? There's nobody there to light the torches. So I, I think it looks pretty cool. I didn't really design this. I adapted it from a Let's Build done by... Oh, Duke on Red. Duke on Red, that's his name. Duke on Red, an amazing YouTuber. Great at building in medieval style. He did uh, a video where he made a crypt, and it looks amazing. He was using Conquest Texture Pack. I wasn't, so I had to make the best of John Smith. And I think I did pretty well. You know, I... I had no, sorry, my laptop's vibrating when I speak. I had no dimensions to go off of, so I did my best, but here we go. Through the retextured door and down into the deep, dark crypt of Lord Amnook. So this took a while. <laughs> this took a very long time. Uh, not as long as Deephold, because um, back then... I didn't have the, well, at least I didn't know about the uh, command clear, where you can clear a large area. But I did here, so I cleared this area and then I could build in it. It's quite detailed. I've done a whole video walking through this where I um, go through it a bit slower and show you where to go properly. So now I'm just going to sort of jump, get in if I can. <laughs> And get out just to give you the general idea so if you want to watch that video where I properly show you the crypt go watch it there's a whole nother section down there which I'm not going to show you because as I said I just want to fly through um, but the idea is you find door keys to pass to new areas there's a pit of doomed souls there where the barbarians themselves who fought the noble soldiers now lie so the idea is to find loads of door keys and pass through to the next location, for the throne room. And eventually you will come across one of the relics which you need. So over here, through this cave, here we have Lord Amnook's grave himself. Um, there, there he is, Lord Amnook. What a lovely looking guy. Nothing creepy, no dark undertones at all. What do you want about? Look, he looks happy as a happy as the next guy. Of course he doesn't. I'm I'm joking. So you'll you'll have to find a door key, open this door, and then head up here. And here we come to the treasure room, which is very cool because it overlooks the throne room where I briefly showed you before. So you can look down, and he's got all his gold and stuff. Head through here, and there is the Relic of Weathertop Tombs. And then you head up the staircase, do, 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 and you come out in quite an interesting location um, called the Barrows. And what the Barrows are is they're, well, they're Barrows, which uh, is an old word for burial mound. So it's where some uh, ancient brothers now lie. Now these, uh, the interior uh, was based off of a tutorial done by Duke on Red again. Very good tutorial, link in the description. But the exterior, I just sort of threw some grass over it, as you can see. But um, the idea is that there's some brothers all lie buried here. Grave of Achrim the Blighted. Verak the Defiled. Carol the Tainted. Akrizak the Doomed. Now, aha, little quiz question for you. If you know where those names come from or what they're based off of, let me know in the comments below because I did not come up with them. But instead, it's a sneaky reference to a pretty good game. If you can let me know in the comments, I don't know, I'll shout you out in a video. But only only the first person to get it. So be quick. Um, so that was Hardenful Barrows. And now I'm going to fly back home. So I've shown you basically the surface of things over here. There's some more hobbit holes down here. I've shown you uh, the surface of things. The rest you can explore for yourself, like the interiors of all the houses and stuff, 
because they're all rather different. But for now, I'm going to show you um, Lake uh, River Run. Sorry, River Run, which is a, something I built very early on when making this map. I said earlier, but uh, currently there's no need to go there when you're playing through the map. But it's just a nice location. There's some cool loot, mostly cake because there's a bakery. There is a market. I'm thinking of maybe putting a bonus quest there because currently I've got two bonus quests on the map. One is to, I showed you, to find Junefall, the pyramid uh, in the desert region. And the other one is to dig up Boromir's grave and steal his treasure. I'm planning on adding a lot more bonus quests in the future. Uh, but currently, yeah, you just have to make do with the two. So here we go. This is River Run. Let me just change today because the zombies like eating up my market stool people over here. I love eating them up and then I, then I have to replace them. So here we have a tavern based off of a let's build done by Keralis, a great YouTuber. Not exactly the same because, I don't know, I suppose I... Didn't really want to copy it exactly. Uh, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. If you want to see the interior, download the map. Here we have a couple of houses designed by Jamsy Boy Minecraft. Very good Minecraft YouTuber. And the piece de resistance. The bakery. The big red brick bakery. Brick, big brick red bakery. Designed by Jarrocraft. I could, I could not design this. This is way beyond my skill. We come to River Run Bakery. Get out of there. Get out. Mm -hmm. Come in here. Uh, the upstairs is very nice as well. <laughs> that, that was a teaser, wasn't it? Oh, the, the upstairs is nice, but you can't have a look. I'm not showing you. Go check it out. Seriously, go 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 check it out. Um, we have two bridges over the little stream which runs along here into a secret area, which I built when I got bored, which is ba based loosely off of Spirited Away, in fact, because... Ta-da! You'll only get that if you've seen Spirited Away. So I'm not even going to bother explaining it. Go watch Spirited Away. If you haven't watched Spirited Away, what are you doing with your life? I mean, honestly, it's like the best film ever. Except for Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit was terrible, but The Hobbit is just bad. They rushed it, which Peter Jackson, uh, Peter Jackson admitted to. He, he agreed that it wasn't his proudest work. Quite right as well. So here we have a windmill designed by Thomas Sleginski. S Thomas Sleginski. Link in the description, as I said before. Uh, it's got a very nice interior, which you can check out if you want. Um, we've got some smaller builds, we've got a very large wheat field, some water towers, and a house, which I'm proud of because I designed it all by my onesies, all by my own. All by myself, sorry. It's a bad grammar day for me. Right, uh, let's head to Scrimble, the large medieval city built by Shrimp1970 himself, the man, the myth, the legend. Go follow him on Twitter uh, at at a Scrimshire, or R Scrimshire, as I first thought it was pronounced. But then I realised his name was Andrew Scrimshire, and then I finally discovered why Scrimville was called Scrimville, because Scrimshire. And I felt like an idiot for not realising that before. But anyway, it is a fantastic village. Um, Andrew is an amazing builder, as you will see very soon when the world loads. Come on world, come on load, come on. Sick and tired of waiting for you to render. <sighs> come on. Oh my disk is almost full. If you'll bear with me one second I must clear some space and delete some trash from my laptop. Sit around, you know, make yourself comfortable. What's in there? Um... Uh, what can I delete? Minecraft backups. Here we go. 
I don't need version 1.6. I don't need version whatever that is. And empty trash. That was my trash emptying. Is there anything else I can get rid of? Come on. Nothing in media. I suppose I'll delete that. Sorry about this, by the way. Currently, I have no way of editing my clips or cutting things out, so... Yep. Mincy rafts? No. Ooh, ooh, no. Um, no, that's an iCloud. <sighs> okay, come on. Natural flag. No. Uh, what can I get rid of? Okay, that should be good for now. Sorry, I'm back. Back in the game. The other King 4 is back in the room. Here we go. Scrimville. A feat of architecture, honestly. Look at this, it's huge. And the moment I enter there, it's going to crash, isn't it? Come on, come on, don't crash, don't crash. Okay, it's good. Normally crashes a couple times and then I'm good but see it seems fine look like it's amazing I don't I don't get it how how can how do you have the skills to do this and the time to do this Andrew yeah. honestly you're amazing look at this uh anyway um back to what we should be doing which is well this I suppose Oh, yeah, I'm just going to talk you through something quickly. After you've found all of the relics, you need to head to the Ruins of Dragonreach, which if you watch the original tour of this world, you can see I show them to you there uh, near Westhold Fortress in the west. But yeah, you go there, take all the relics with you, place them in the chest, and the dragon spawns, and you use the elytra, which is provided to chase him and kill him and run him down. He will eventually lead you to... Uh, Scrimville over here and I know that he will do that because it's the original sp spawn point of the map the coordinates 0 100 0 or whatever so he will go there he'll start circling in the sky and then he'll swoop down onto the podium and you'll get the chance to kill him and it's very important or at least it's very useful that he always comes here because it means that I can put up some sneaky redstone which means that after killing the dragon you will be automatically teleported to a new location, which is part two of the map, which isn't a part two. You don't have to download a second part. It's all within the same map, but I'd treat it as a part two because it's got a new storyline and that sort of thing. But um, over here, where's the podium? Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Where are you? Where are you at? Okay, there it is. This podium. Not, not down here. <laughs> This podium. So the dragon will come here, he'll spend his days swooping down and swooping down and you can attack him. And as soon as he's dead, you will be teleported to um, Stonehaven. I'm going to teleport there too because it's quite far to fly. Photos to be able to come. Sorry, I'm leaving you a sec just to get the bloody coordinates where am i okay it will teleport you to minus 21 85 12 35 uh okay not here it will actually teleport you where am i going on top of a tree, which has some fancy schmancy redstone works, which will make you levitate. So over here, it will teleport you, bang, here. You'll be given a slowness effect before you teleport. But it plays this nice sort of floaty cutscene. Welcome to Avon, part two. Da, 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 da. Head to the city. 
So you head into Stonehaven. And Stonehaven, again, like Scrimville, was built by Shrimp 1970. And is it's amazing. I, honestly, I, could, I, I have spent hours exploring this thing and I have not scratched the surface of what it holds within. It's huge. But um, it tells you that this is your home. So go in here. And you have all the essentials again. It basically mimics the contents of your previous home in Riverwood, which you can return to by pressing this button. However, the only way to return here would then be to teleport or to use the button in this chest, which you must take with you. Because there's an iron block on the wall in your Riverwood house, and if you put the button on there and press it, it will take you back here. Okay, so the idea for part two, which I explain in more detail in another video, if you want to subscribe and watch that, you can, no, nothing stopping you. I'm certainly not. But the idea is that you're finding things called virtues, which are these, which are basically eyes of ender, which you need because um, some people believe that the dragon is going to return. So the reason you've been summoned to Stonehaven and given this lovely little house is because the king has decided to give you a knighthood for your efforts in killing the dragon and saving the realm. So you're here anyway. Your job as a knight is now to protect the kingdom, but fears arise that the dragon is going to return. So, what people are saying is that the orcs um, are planning on reviving the dragon in an alternate dimension called the Dragon Realm, for which I've used the End Dimension, which I've given a fancy makeover, which I'll show you soon. But uh, yeah, you're finding the virtues, doing various quests like you did before, finding the relics, except that you use the virtues on the portal to activate the portal,